Hello and welcome to City Beat, your central source of news and information for the city of Rocky Mount. I'm Tamika Keena Norman, Public Affairs Manager, and during today's show, it's all about our Public Works employees. They provide so many services for all of our citizens of Rocky Mount. And did you know that Public Works Week is happening May 19th through May 25th, where we pay honor to those Public Works employees. So stay tuned for additional information about all of our Public Works departments right here on City Beat. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. Hello and welcome back to City Beat. And if you're just tuning in to today's show, we're highlighting all of our public works divisions and they provide a lot of services for you. As a matter of fact, we have with us Michael Shaw, who is over our fleet maintenance division, one of four divisions for uh, our public works department. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing today? Good, Tamika? good. Excited because public works week is happening uh, May 19th through the 25th. But a lot of our viewers don't have an idea of our different divisions and the services that you offer. So what's the purpose of your division? Our division purpose is to uh, maintain our fleet of vehicles that you see here in the city. Uh, approximately 780 vehicles, which consist, of course, of uh, sedans, pickup trucks, off-road equipment, and trailers. Uh, we do this by preventive maintenance, and of course, when they break down, repairing them. Uh, but preventive maintenance, we do things like oil changes, lubrication, and things like that. So how many vehicles typically are, are you dealing with? We have a uh, total of 700 vehicles and equipment, uh, 556 which are licensed vehicles. Uh, that means, uh, like I said before, the trucks, uh, the, the police vehicles, uh, dump trucks and things like that, they have to run license plates. And again, we have about 88 pieces of what we call off-road equipment, and we do have about 136 trailers. But we also, everything that's motorized in the city, we handle that. So that includes lawn mowers, weed eaters, uh, blowers or things like that. So, the so you're busy. Division, we are very busy. Very busy. <laughs> you are very busy. And I know you were introducing me to some of the employees here, but tell me about how many employees you have and, and some of the jobs. Well, to, right now we have about 17 employees here with fleet maintenance. Uh, basically, we have uh, it's broken down as far as our mechanics, uh, parts rooms. We have a parts room manager, parts clerk. We have two supervisors that handles two segments of our. Uh, fleet maintenance, which we call heavy end and light end. We also have an uh, administrative clerk uh, who actually handles all the, the billing, all the licenses of all the vehicles and keeping up with all the records and, of course, uh, time and things like that. Uh -huh. um, we also have a welder on site that actually can fabricate things uh, either here on site or either we can go out in the field and fabricate whatever we need to do as far as welding. We also have a tie shop. In the tie shop, we uh, actually uh, Everything, every vehicle, we actually dismount, mount tires, repair tires, balance them uh, for everything we have in the city. Uh, also, we do have a, a transit segment. We uh, ha actually handle the maintenance of the urban section. And that's the buses you see running around in the city, the seven big ones, and then the, the cutaways that run the regular routes around the city. Uh, we have a mechanic to take care of that. Uh, again, and like I, I talked about we have what we call a heavy end and a light end. The light end mainly handles everything from one ton down and that means pickup trucks and mainly police cars. We do a lot of uh, uh, work on police cars and uh, again on the heavy end that's all the like I said garbage trucks, dump trucks and things like that, that okay. you see right around the city and the utility department. Uh, we handle everything that, of course you see the bucket trucks going around taking care of because we are a utility city. Okay, and I'm glad you explained that because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize how many jobs, how many mm -hmm. functions you have within mm -hmm. this particular division. Um, you told me one time that you have some of the longest working hours of, <laughs> <laughs> of yeah. any department. Tell me about that and why that's necessary. Well, we actually run two shifts here. Uh, our first shift starts at 7.30 in the morning and goes to 4. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where a majority of our mechanics are. And we're here to do the uh, repair work to anything that breaks down so we ensure that it goes back out so that uh, of course our citizens uh, we provide the service of them 
and then we do some preventive maintenance on the first shift. Mm -hmm. But I have a second shift that starts at 2.30 in the afternoon and goes until 11.30 at night. Mm -hmm. And they are uh, mainly our preventive maintenance crew. Uh, they, because people, most of our cities, uh, city employees are working during the day, uh, doing their jobs, we, we utilize, we pull that particular division or that particular shift to do our preventive maintenance but when they're, they're home. Uh, Except in emergencies, when there's emergencies, we go, uh, you know, they have to use those vehicles when they're on call, per se. Okay. okay. Now, now, once a vehicle is done, you can't do anything else for it. What happens to those particular vehicles? Well, once we, uh, we try to utilize, uh, by what we do, as far as preventive maintenance and keep them repaired, we try to prolong the service as far as, because it's a big commitment, we have some very expensive equipment mm -hmm. that uh, has to deal with dealing with the infrastructure of the city. But when the life is gone, we actually uh, strip those down and we actually, uh, they are surplus by city council and then at that point we, are, we, are, we sell them. Uh, and we use, utilize the usgovernmentdeals.com. Okay. So. Now, how do you think the fleet maintenance division uh, impacts all of our citizens of Rocky Mount overall? Well, I put it like this. Um, we are the, my, this particular division is the kind of the hidden division because the city employees are actually our customers because you don't see us out in the street. You don't see us out in the street uh, whether we repair a water main, we repair a uh, utility line, anything, but we are the pe behind the scenes people that ensure that those people have the equipment out there that's going to be reliable and mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. and that's that's what we do. We're behind the scenes and they are our customers. That's but we, we, we greet them hopefully with a smile and because when they say they bring something into us, it's usually broke. And mm -hmm. our job is to fix it and make sure it's safe out there for them to operate it and safe because they're around us, our citizens of Rocky Mountain. They have to be able to do their job. That's yeah. correct. Exactly. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So any other interesting aspects about fleet maintenance that you'd like to share? Well, fleet maintenance, uh, we are, a lot of people don't know as for some of the other things we do. We, we actually have four fueling sites within the city and we are, we are actually responsible for those. We have our main site here, right here in front of the garage. Uh, and also we have two fire stations that have fueling stations. And also we have a 12,000 gallon above ground tank out in environmental services uh, that we utilize to fuel uh, vehicles. And, uh, but uh, like I say, we do a lot of behind the scenes things. Uh, to take care of uh, what we need to do here in the city of Rocky Mountain. And, and speaking of fueling stations, I know we just had a ceremony for our refueling station for the compressed natural gas right. vehicles. Uh, what was your role in that? How difficult are those vehicles to maintain? Well, at this point now, uh, we, as far as repairing them or doing their work, we can still we do the maintenance on them, but those vehicles, because they are run on natural gas and natural gas, whenever there's a leak, we cannot bring them in our garage to repair them. We have to repair repair them outside. Uh, we will probably in the future as we get more vehicles we will get our garage certified. We have to put certain monitors in here so that we can detect if it's in a leak leakage of gas. Uh, but our job is of course to maintain those. Uh, uh, we currently have two garbage trucks of course and we have a bus uh, that all, all CNG powered. Okay. Yeah. Well if someone wants to find out more information about fleet maintenance, what should they do? They can contact me here, uh, see Michael Shaw, the fleet maintenance superintendent at 252-467-4889. Or you of course right. can visit the city website and we do have uh, information about fleet maintenance on the website. All right. Well thanks Mike. Well thank you. We appreciate Tamika. that and thanks to you uh, for leading your employees. Thanks for all that they do. Okay. okay. And thank you. All right. all right. Thank you for tuning in to City Beat. We'll be right back with much more on our Public Works employees. Don't forget Public Works Week is coming up May 19th through May 25th. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman. More of City Beat up next. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. 
Hello and welcome back to City Beat. Now, if you've tuned into the show, you know that Public Works Week is taking place May 19th through the 25th. And during that time, we recognize individuals who work in our Public Works Department. And today I'm interviewing all of the supervisors for each division. So you'll be acquainted with some of the services that they provide. It's really interesting stuff. And with me right now is Ed White, our Streets and Stormwater Superintendent. Hello and welcome to City Beat. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, well we're glad to have you today. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your division. Well, our division is the Streets and Stormwater Division. Um, we're responsible for, number one, getting the stormwater out of the city. Number two, keeping our streets safe for the traveling public and pedestrians. Okay. And we're going to talk a little later with Blair Hinkle about the stormwater program, but tell me a little bit about streets. I know cities are normally um, uh, the ones responsible for maintaining streets. What's involved in that maintenance? Well, the city has uh, a total some 500 plus miles of streets in the city. Uh, not all owned by the city. DOT owns a large portion of the streets in the city. Mm -hmm. So we take care of what uh, is our responsibility. Um, as far as DOT streets are concerned, if we have a major issue that we need to deal with immediately, we will try to address that, such as a, um, a sinkhole in a street or something that we can safe up uh, and prevent any kind of uh, accidents from occurring. Uh, from a streets standpoint, uh, we try to maintain all the utility cut repairs, uh, pothole repairs. Um, we don't really take a mileage uh, calculation of how much we do. We do it by square footage calculation. Um, as far as resurfacing streets, resurfacing are handled by the engineering department because uh, they're all done under a contract basis. So how many square feet of repairs do you handle within a year's time or this past year? Uh, last physical year, physical year 12, we did some 65,000 square feet. All right, that's a lot. Yep. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about sidewalks because I understand that Rocky Mount is going towards a more pedestrian friendly community. You've do done a lot of work with sidewalks. What's involved with, with that maintenance? Um, maintenance of sidewalks is a lot of customer based uh, as far as complaint based. Um, sidewalks that are 30, 40, 50 years old, uh, root intrusion, pushing sidewalks up, uh, breaking the sidewalk. Um, so we, we base a lot of our work on the complaints that we get. Mm -hmm. uh, if we ever have times when we get uh, not a slack period but a slower period, then we will identify specific locations that we send the crew to and they work on. There's a couple ways to solve problems with sidewalks. First, you pull it out, remove it, and replace it. Mm -hmm. Or we have a grinder that if we feel like we can grind those uh, edges down that are unsafe or trip hazards, we try to grind them down mm -hmm. so we won't have to replace that sidewalk. Okay. Now, you said sidewalks were complaint-based, but what about streets? What determines what streets you maintain or get to or repair first? Okay, well, as far as utility work is concerned, when gas, electric, um, water, sewer, when they cut streets, they turn in uh, cut tickets to us. Uh, and our, our response list on from that aspect of it is based on that list that we get from those different utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we also identify potholes. Uh, we also try to identify intrusion spots where roots are coming in and pushing the asphalt up and we had to go in and remove the asphalt and replace it. Okay. Um, but as far as streets replacement um, or resurfacing, that's based on a uh, scoring system uh, that is again is handled by engineering. Okay. Loose leaf collection, that's something that residents seem to really love and take advantage of. Explain loose leaf collection, how often is it done? Well, we do loose leaf collection in the months of November, December, and uh, then again we try to follow up in March. Uh, some Januarys we will try to do an extra collection. So basically we, we have two different uh, routes. We have a north route and a south route. Each mm -hmm. month we run each route twice. Mm -hmm. So that is a total, a minimum of six passes over the city. And if we do extra in January, it's normally one for each section, so six or seven passes. Okay. Seems like a really good program. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the department itself. How many employees do you have and what are your hours like? Uh, we have a staff of approximately 58 
employees, uh, field and administration. Uh, our people here, with the exception of the administrative uh, people, work 10 hour days. Mm -hmm. So they work, we have uh, about half of our employees work Monday through Thursday. The other half work Tuesday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, they alternate every month. They will switch and go from one schedule to the other. Um, we work 365 if need be, uh, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. Wow, so you're some hard working folks. <laughs> We've got good people. So how do you think the Streets and Stormwater Division is beneficial for the community? Well, first of all, we try to make sure that we get stormwater out of the system, uh, out of the city. Um, that is a very vital part, especially in our area. Uh, if we can't get the water out of the city, obviously we're going to have flooding. Mm -hmm. um, we always will and will continue to have flooding issues when we get large amounts of rain. So it's highly important that we keep the canals, ditches, and all the infrastructure open. Uh, and that's one of the things that our guys do here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the capability to do manual as well as mechanical. Uh, we even had the capability of TV and the lines to make sure that we don't have problems inside the lines. Uh, as far as streets are concerned, snow comes, ice comes, sleet, rain. Uh, most people get to go home, mm -hmm. stay warm, stay dry. Our people had to go to work. Uh, we had to make the roads as safe as we can. We had to stay with it until we get it as safe as we can. So from that aspect, uh, we contribute much to the public safety. Uh, when a hurricane comes, again, most people get to go home, stay protected. Our guys go out and stay till the wind gets approximately 35 to 40 miles an hour before we pull them in off the street. Mm -hmm. They are out clearing debris as the storm is progressing. Uh, and then once it dies back down to a certain point at that same level, we will put them back out there. And mm -hmm. we will run 24 hours a day until we can get the streets safe for travel. Okay. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about some of the other functions or services that you provide as well, because those are some things that I think residents aren't really aware of. Well, we provide, we are in charge of maintaining the compost site for the city, which is out on, at Arrow Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we collect and compost some 25,000 cubic yards of compost each year. Uh, we give that compost away uh, the months of April through uh, October. Uh, the first Friday, uh, every Friday uh, of every week, we are out there during that, those months. And then the first Saturday of each month, we're there to give compost away, unless it's a holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. And if it is a holiday weekend, then the following Saturday, we would have somebody out there. Uh, we're also uh, in charge of uh, maintaining the city's uh, LCID site, which is land clearing and inert debris, uh, which is mainly asphalt products, uh, big trees, concrete, uh, things that you don't want to go put in a regular landfill. Okay. So we're responsible for keeping that and um, keeping it at a maintain a level of maintenance that the state requires that be kept at. Okay. Anything else you want to mention that might uh, be interesting for our viewers? Uh, just that our employees uh, provide a very essential service. They give of themselves. Um, We've got a fantastic group of employees here. Uh, we have people of all imaginable skill sets, uh, and it takes a combination of those people to make things happen, and um, they do a really great job at, um, when it comes time to go, they're ready to go. All right, well, we thank you for all you do, and if someone wants to find out more information about street stormwater, what do they need to do? Uh, they can call our office at 467-4906. Um, and just to ask a question and if the people that answer the phone can't answer that question, they'll find somebody that will. All right. Well, thank you, Ed. Thank you. All right. And thank you for tuning in. We'll be right back with more about Public Works. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Hello and welcome back to City Beat and hopefully you're learning some interesting information about the divisions within our Public Works Department. Thanks to Michael Shaw, also Ed White for telling us about the Fleet Maintenance Division as well as Streets and Stormwater. And here to tell us a little bit more about our Stormwater Program is Blair Hinkle, Assistant Director for Public Works and Stormwater Manager. Yes. How are you? I'm well, happy to be here. Tell me a little bit about your Stormwater Program and why the city needs one. Sure. Well, the city Stormwater Program uh, really deals with two main facets, uh, water quality and water quantity. Water quality, of course, is pollution, um, things like that. Water quantity is more flooding, what folks see. Sometimes when it rains, the ditches fill up, things like that. Um, so really, those are the two things that we're, that we're dealing with. Uh, and, and so the program's resources are really split three different ways. Um, the first is with the administration division or administration of, of our federal stormwater permit. Um, and, and we do things like review plans uh, for new development to make sure that they meet the requirements um, that the city has, that the state has, and that the federal government have for, um, for stormwater uh, controls. Um, the second thing we do is maintain all of the existing stormwater infrastructure within the city. So that's uh, all of the pipes, all of the ditches, um, curb and gutters. Uh, we sweep all the streets, uh, and that's, that's a way to reduce pollution that ends up <clears throat> in the Tar River. The final thing that we do is plan uh, the construction projects uh, that the city undertakes to improve the stormwater system. Uh, so to reduce flooding, to improve water quality, things like that. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of different functions. Uh, tell me, um, how does the city pay for all of that? Sure. Um, the city has a stormwater utility. Uh, and so residential uh, utility customers will notice on their utility bills uh, each month that there's a $4.25 charge per month. Um, and so that fully supports the city stormwater program. Um, right now it brings in around $3.4 million per year that we use mm -hmm. solely for the stormwater program. Okay, and it's good that it's not a lot for, for each individual to pay or each household. That's right. Um, how long has the stormwater program been in existence? The stormwater program started back in, on July 1st of 2004. Okay. Are we the only city with a fee, or is that typical? No. In fact, most larger cities in the state of North Carolina have a, some sort of stormwater utility program that they use to support their stormwater activities. Okay. The stormwater program sounds really great, but just explain to me as a citizen, why should this matter? Sure. Well, clearly water quality and water quantity are both big issues. Mm -hmm. um, the one that we see most often is the water quantity issue or the flooding issue. Uh, and so we've been working really hard over the last 10, 10 or so years um, to really address some of the flooding concerns um, that the citizens of the city have. Um, but as importantly, um, and maybe a little less visibly, water quality is a big thing too. We need to reduce the pollution, um, and part of the city's stormwater program is uh, what we call illicit discharge enforcement. Um, and that means, you know, if someone's changing their oil uh, and dumping it into a storm drain, um, those sorts of activities pollute the Tar River, um, mm -hmm. and the Tar River is going to be here long after we all are gone. Uh, and so it's important that we do what we need to do to make sure that the Tar River stays healthy um, for, for, our, for the residents here in the city and those residents downstream um, of, of us. Okay. Let's switch gears just a little bit um, because I've been talking about, when I was talking to Michael Shaw and Ed White, we talked about Public Works Week. Why is Public Works Week, or why should it be important, not only for employees, but for Rocky Mount citizens? Sure. Well, the citizens that the employees of, of the Public Works Department provide are vital services mm -hmm. um, to, to the residents of the city of Rocky Mount. I mean, as you've seen, everything from, you know, stormwater management and, and keeping the drains clear, mm -hmm. um, all the way to making sure that the vehicles that the city utilizes to provide our services keep running. Uh, and so it, it's the 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 services that the employees provide are incredibly important. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't realize as well that you provide so many sure. different services because I'm learning too in right. this interview. Again, we've got stormwater, we've got streets maintenance, uh, fleet maintenance, uh, community code, environmental services. I mean, all of these are very vital services and, and we're very proud of our employees. Um, they, they do an outstanding job and we're very appreciative to them for the services that they provide. Uh, and so Public Works Week is a way that we can all come together mm -hmm. um, and really learn more about those services that they provide um, and, and, you know, express our gratitude to them for the services that they provide. 
Okay. I remember last year, which was my first year with the city, there were different activities going on for Public Works Week. You're going to have the same thing this year as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. We're looking forward to a, our Public Works Equipment Show uh, where we'll bring out all of the, a lot of the equipment that we have, um, everything from um, backhoes and, and front end loaders to uh, some of our new um, garbage trucks that have, that are the um, automated garbage trucks. Um, so really exciting equipment. It's a chance uh, for everyone to come out and put their hands on the equipment and see how it works and, and, and really get a good feel for the equipment that we use. And will there be someone on hand to kind of explain to us the function? Absolutely. Yeah. There, there will be, the experts will be on hand. The folks that actually <laughs> operate the equipment will be there uh, and, and they'll be able to answer any questions that anyone has. Okay, and then you have a, which is a private event, but it's a luncheon as well, right? That's right. Every year we do a luncheon for all the Public Works employees. Uh, we come together, have a good meal, um, and, and really some good fellowship and networking. And, um, you know, some of the folks, because of the variety of services that we provide, um, some of the folks in one division may not have a chance to interact much with mm -hmm. some of the folks in another, in another division. <clears throat> so it's a good opportunity for everyone to be able to come together and, and really see what, what, what everyone else does. And, and really talk. Thanks so much, Blair, and thank you for tuning in to another section of City Beat as we talk about our public works employees. And don't forget to log on to the website RockyMountNC.gov for additional information about the equipment show. Don't forget more of City Beat is coming up next. Discover Downtown Rocky Mount with Downtown Live, May 16th to September 19th. You're invited to the lawn of the Imperial Center for free outdoor concerts brought to you by PNC Bank. Hear from groups like the Embers, the Dams, Fantasy, and more. Doors open at 5, music starts at 6. Thanks to our title sponsor, PNC Bank. And thanks to all of the following sponsors. For more info on Downtown Live, visit downtownrockymount.com or call 972-1151. Join us for Rocky Mount's Downtown Live Summer Music Series. Hello and welcome back to City Beat. We've had some really interesting conversations with uh, supervisors in our public works department from streets and stormwater to our fleet's maintenance division as well as uh, stormwater management. And today we're going to continue that conversation with Brenton Bent over our community code division. Hi, how are you? Doing pretty good, thank you. Yeah, and I know just like you, I'm, I'm really excited about our Public Works Week, which is coming up soon. And um, we wanted to get an opportunity to talk to each division manager to give folks an idea of the services that your various divisions offer. So tell me a little bit about community code. What does that entail? Okay, well, community code primarily is responsible for promoting and ensuring um, safe and decent living conditions um, by, by assuring that houses, uh, houses are in compliance with the minimum housing code. Um, we also enforce um, public health and safety nuisance ordinance. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what if some violations occur, what happens with property owners, what, what's that process like? Okay, well we have six inspectors who are um, out in the field and they will identify violations or violations may be called into the, depart the division. Um, once that is done, we send a notice to the property owner. So let's take for example a housing violation. Um, what that We'll, we begin that process by sending the notice to the, to the property owner, um, listing the conditions that we are concerned about, and we give them an opportunity to come to what we call a complaint hearing. This is really an informal hearing um, that is held here in this building, and the property owner has an opportunity to ask any questions concerning the inspections or our findings, and also to give us an idea of what his or her plans are for um, doing the repairs that we have cited. Um, at that hearing, I will issue an order to repair, and generally it's around 30 days. Um, mm -hmm. However, there's an appeals process um, if the property owner feels like that time frame is inadequate, and they will appeal to the Community Appeals Board. Now, that is a board that's just made up of normal citizens from each ward, um, from each council member, and that board will listen to the case presented um, on behalf on, from the property owner and also from the city and I am the city's representative at that board hearing and they will also in turn make a ruling or they may uphold the position of the inspector they have also the opportunity to tell the property owner a new deadline overrule they can overrule my initial ruling um, deadline <clears throat> so to speak and 
at that time, the property owner will be expected to comply, to get all the repairs done, to bring the house up to code. Uh, if that's not done and the house remains occupied, then we move into a different area where civil penalties will be implemented. Okay. So um, aside from the process, I know you talked about housing and talked about public nuisances, but what are some other violations that you've seen or that you deal with? You know, there are so many of them out there, really. Um, grass and weed mm -hmm. violation is one that um, at this time of the year is, is sort of taking the focus because um, we're in the growing season and, you know, unfortunately we have not had uh, as high a compliance as I would like to see with um, that particular um, violation. Um, overgrown weeds, of course, is going to pro provide harbages for rats and snakes and um, other animals. And so we are trying to stay on top of it. Okay. So that's something that we are primarily focusing on right now because it's that time when we get a lot of complaints about overgrown grass. Um, in addition to that, of course, we are focusing on public nuisances. We are, um, folks will have a lot of what we call trash and waste and it, this can vary from building materials or just um, you know old, old, old engine parts, old car parts and all that stuff stocked in their yard. All those things also prevent, um, create harbages for animals that, um, that we want to get rid of. So um, that's another one. And of course we cannot overlook the vehicles because too many junk what we call junk vehicles, <laughs> uh, are in the city limit and we have to talk to property owners or the owners of those vehicles and ask them to remove it. So again, um, those are some of the violations. Graffiti is also another one that um, we are always concerned about because it's, it's, it, it continues to promote that antisocial behavior too. Um, and most times we work with the police department when we have graffiti. Okay. So you mentioned working with the police departments. Are there any other departments that you work with? I, when you mention housing, I automatically think of planning. Yes. Do you work with them or any other departments? Oh, yeah. We pretty much work with all the departments in, 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 a, in more ways than one. And, and that's a great thing because um, it's so important that we, we advance, you know, we stick to the mission of the city, which is to advance community well-being, safety, and quality of life. We work with the police department. Sometimes they are carrying out an activity at a particular property, mm -hmm. and they will call us and let us know what they have seen. And then we go in, and we will put the house under code if we see housing code violations there. Okay. We work with the fire department. They notify us each time there's a fire, or if they have to respond um, to you know, concerns at a property, then they'll notify us of what they have seen. We work closely with the planning division um, inspections because our inspectors are focusing on um, health and safety issues in the, in, the property, in the houses that we inspect. But at the same time, some of those houses have structural defects and um, the property owner will require permits and that is issued through the inspections division. And once the permits are issued, then they, they follow up with their inspection. And once they clear that case, then we are notified that that structural um, uh, situation has been resolved, then we, we can sign off on it too. Okay. So we work with um, police, fire, inspections, planning. Um, we, we just work with pretty much all the departments, with streets department, and they do a lot of demolitions for us. Okay. And um, <clears throat> we work closely with environmental services because at times when we, when people, when, when some folks will put their, their stuff from the house, like they're doing a clean out at the street, we have to issue a public nuisance notice. And if it's blocking the right away, we expect it to get, the, expect them to get it up within a certain time frame and we ask environmental service to get it and we bill the, the customer. Okay. Now what about residents? How can residents help you accomplish your mission? You know, the sense of personal responsibility is important. So we, we ask everybody out there to, to, to just behave and um, do things in, in a social, socially acceptable way. Um, however, you know, we're not living in a perfect world. So what we are asking residents to do is to, you know, be each other's um, advocate in a sense. Just kind of like try to, if you see bad behavior, then try to address it for, uh, from that level. But do not hesitate to call code enforcement. Um, we need your eyes out there to help us. Mm -hmm. um, we have approximately 37, 38 
maybe square feet of uh, square miles um, that encom encompasses Rocky Mount. And we have six inspectors who are not able to see everything. So we really rely on the public to be our eyes out there, to call us when they see violations. And we, we want to be their first responders. Do not hesitate to call us because that's why we are here. We're here to serve the public. And if it means forming that partnership with the neighborhood presidents or other interest groups in the communities, um, that's exactly what we want to do. Okay. You keep mentioning inspectors. What are some other jobs that are filled here in the community code division, some other functions? Okay. Um, and one, this is very interesting because um, a lot of times when, we, when, when folks hear about code enforcement, they think we're out there just trying to catch people doing something wrong. But we provide this very important service, and that is our integrated pest management control system. We have in one of our inspectors who are primarily responsible for abating um, rats and, 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 and mosquitoes. So we have equipment that we use to fog for mosquito um, nuisance in the nights and also applying larvicides um, in what we are, we have bodies of water, like in woodland ponds and anything, unlike places like those are in pots in backyards where folks are not turning over their pots and mosquitoes are breeding in there. So we do that service from community code. Um, and when you say fog, that makes them come out. No, we, we, fog is a chemical that is oh, sprayed okay, okay. In, in a mist form <laughs> okay. that, that will kill the adult mosquitoes. Okay. You know, so um, that's that, an that's important service that we offer from the community code division, our integrated pest management system. And when I say integrated, it means that we're also seeking their harborage where they live and trying to remove that. Mm -hmm. So we are doing it in, in, in more than one ways. We are removing the harborages and then we are also killing the the, the, the young ones, the larvas, the larvas and the, the, um, the young larvas, and then the um, adults. Okay. Well, kudos to whoever has that job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in addition to that, the, the Keep America Beautiful program mm -hmm. is also under the umbrella of community code enforcement. And our um, Cornelia McGee is our um, director for that program, and she is very involved in litter prevention. And keeping neighborhood and improving the, the appearance of the neighborhoods. Right, because I know right now they're going through the Great American Cleanup. Exactly. We had some employees to go out and uh, clean up some areas of Rocky Mount right. recently. Right, and that is that is critically important mm -hmm. because by uplifting the appearance of the neighborhoods and doing what we do in code enforcement to negate the impact of substandard housing, um, it will meet the objective set forth by our city manager, which is to promote economic community economic development. Mm -hmm. Are there any other services that you think our viewers might find interesting? Well, that's primarily what we do in code enforcement. Just to rehash a little bit, we make sure that houses are safe from, for you know human habitation. We make sure that um, we have compliance with grass and weed nuisances, pub um, other public health nuisances, and we do all our mosquito and rodent control and keep the America, keep the we keep America beautiful program. Um, that's pretty much all the services that we are offering at this time. Okay. Well, how would a person reach you or the community code division? Okay, we are open um, for business uh, all the time, eight thirty to five. I have my city cell phone with me. Um, I'll take calls after hours if I have to. Um, so I, we can be contacted here in the community code division. Information about code enforcement is on the city's website, um, Muni Code. Uh, chapters um, 10 and 11, if someone wants to read up on um, what exactly we do um, and what, are the, what does the ordinance say and the different regulations that we enforce, you know, they should make it a, a Sunday afternoon reading, okay. so to speak. <laughs> so, and what's that main number? Uh, the, the, the main number for this building is 252-467-4955. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Brenton. You're welcome. All right. All right. And thank you for joining as well. We have one more segment remaining for our public work show. We're going to speak with uh, Mr. Cameron Privet of Environmental Services. Thanks for watching City Beat. We'll be right back.
and welcome back to City Beat. And thanks so much for tuning in to today's show all about our Public Works employees and all of the services that they offer. You know, Public Works Week is coming up May 19th through the 25th. And our last, you know, we saved the best for last, Mr. Cameron Privet of Environmental Services. How you doing, Cameron? Doing good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me a little bit about environmental services and what your division's purpose is. Well, our division is charged with, with the responsibility of the collection and disposal of residential solid waste, electronics, yard waste, recyclables, white goods, uh, just a variety of things. And we do that uh, uh, both residential and commercial services. We also serve as a uh, gathering point for solid waste that comes from Nash and Edgecombe counties. It's brought here by private haulers and other municipalities. Uh, to be collected and prepared for disposal in the landfill. Okay, so how many times per week do collections occur? Uh, we work on uh, residential collection Tuesday through Friday. Everything takes place on one scheduled day. All services are provided. We start um, east side of town, go south, go west, and then come back north. But we do everything on that one day, be up to four or five different trucks depending on uh, if we've got extra trucks available to pick up materials at individual residences. Okay, and so what happens with collections once you take them, then what happens to them? Well, if it's yard waste, it goes out to the city's compost facility on our road where it's turned into mulch. That uh, particular facility is dealt with primarily by the streets department. Uh, if it's garbage, it'll come through the trailer behind me. There's a set of scales over there. Uh, once it's been properly weighed, and this is true whether it's city, tru uh, city trucks coming through or one of our other transfer station users, then they go to our transfer station where it's dumped and loaded into a uh, tractor trailer to be taken to the landfill in Orlando. Now, recycling comes across as well. We take that to another facility on site, and we take that to Raleigh to Sunoco Recycling to a uh, uh, material recovery facility. Okay, and let me mention earlier today, it was a little ugly, you're the first interviewee that we've had outside, so tell me a little bit about our location right now. I know we're on Th Thorpe Road, but talk a little bit about what's behind us okay. and beside us. Well, our location on Thorpe Road, we're between two distinctive landmarks. The YMCA is back uh, facing Independence, and then over to our our right, we've got the city's pole yard with a radio tower, so we're easy to find based on those landmarks. Directly behind me is a uh, trailer, that's our scale house. Everything that comes into the transfer station stops over there, is weighed, um, and then it proceeds to one of our two facilities here uh, to unload their materials. And once they're unloaded, then we in turn use uh, specific equipment to load them up into trailers. Uh, in the case of recyclables, they go in closed top trailers. We take two trailer loads a week to Raleigh. In the case of solid waste, it's loaded into open top trailers uh, mm -hmm. in preparation to go to Bertie County. And, and talk a little bit about uh, this area too, the CNG refueling station. Okay. Immediately behind me, there's a truck that's got a blue body on it. Uh, we purchased two rear loaders that are CNG powered through a Blue Skies grant um, and we also put the station in. The advantage to CNG, uh, one is the trucks are much quieter, they're much cleaner and we're burning compressed natural gas, we're saving a lot of fuel in those. So uh, they've been a very good addition and I hope is opportunity comes, you know, we may be able to expand the fleet, but we're saving a fairly significant amount of diesel fuel every month. That's a good thing. And, and from what you're telling me, this uh, division seems pretty expansive. How many people do you have within the division and, and what are some of their functions? Well, we've got five people who are devoted to the collection of materials starting at the scale house going up to the transfer station. We've got that group of folks. Then we've got 47 other people involved in actual collection of material, um, answering phone calls, supervisors, maintenance. Um, we've also got a group of folks that work on our front loaders that are the large trucks that provide dumpster service uh, mm -hmm. to commercial and 
uh, some residential areas such as apartments, mobile home parks. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of folks have asked as well about the rollout recycling program. I know we went through a pilot program. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, we put out about 4,000 carts uh, throughout the city. Uh, and it's a 96 gallon container, very similar to the garbage carts many people have, except it has a blue lid. Mm -hmm. It's designed for recyclables only. We collect it every two weeks. The advantage of, of the cart for the restaurant is they've got five times the capacity of one of the red bins. Uh, it's easier to get to the street, even in cold weather or rainy weather. And for our collectors, it's actually easier to uh, service the containers because we use the hydraulic jacks on truck. But the capacity is the main uh, advantage uh, for us. Uh, we hope to expand that. Uh, unfortunately, it's just going to take a little bit of time to reach every residence in town. So how was it determined who was involved with the pilot program? Well, we had to pick specific geographic areas. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with four days of service, we tried to pick two areas per, um, per day of service. We'll collect one area one week, another area the following week. But we, you know, again, we try to touch all parts of the city. We went to areas that were recycling well. We went to areas that were recycling poorly in the anticipation that would make it easier for people to recycle. And again, another advantage to recycling is it's actually more cost effective to uh, deal with disposal of recyclables than it is to put things in a landfill. And of course, a lot of things are banned from the landfill, such as aluminum cans, plastic bottles, and so on. Okay. What about, what about bulk items? Well, Where are those taken? The truck that just passed us is one of our grab-all trucks, and a bulk item to us is large furniture items, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that truck is a specialized piece of equipment where the operator sits up top, operates a hydraulic claw or knuckle right. boom, picks it up, and then all that comes back to the transfer station as well. Okay, so any other services that you might have missed? Well, there's a variety of things that we also do. We collect used oil uh, from residences. We pick up tires. Uh, we do have available for people that are doing cleanup of um, you know, large yard cleanups. I'm not talking about land clearing, but where they may have a lot of leaves or where they uh, pruning bushes, or they may be clearing out an attic or a storage house. Mm -hmm. We do have a debris trailer. It's the size of a, a Ford pickup truck, 16 cubic yards, that's available for a, a small fee, mm -hmm. uh, and that can be scheduled by calling our office. Uh, we also pick up recyclables from Ford drop-off locations throughout town. Um, that's a place where people that may have excess materials want to get, get them out of the house can go ahead and take them, but we, we do that as well. Okay, well, some interesting stuff, Cameron. Right. Thank okay. you so much. All Anything right. else you want to add? Well, one other thing I would ask, you know, one of the questions we, we run into periodically is what's the best way to deal with yard waste? Yard waste needs to be kept separate from garbage. It doesn't need to be included in those uh, rollout carts. Uh, we prefer a clear plastic bag, if possible, so it's readily identifiable because yard waste, again, we're taking to the compost yard at, at our road and we've got to pick those bags up and our personnel have to split it and open it because we can't run the, the plastic through. But mm -hmm. again, by law we have to keep yard waste out of the landfill so we're making a conscientious effort to do that. We do allow restaurants to purchase a rollout cart and have it designated for yard waste only. So again, okay. clear separation of that. Uh, another thing is in preparing your trash to go into your rollout container always advisable to put it in a bag, tie the top of the bag. That way as the cart's dumped into the truck, you know, we don't have blowing trash up and down the, the street. Okay. And what's that number? You mentioned your office number earlier. Right. If you call 467-4800, choose option 7. Uh, another place for information is also the city's website. Go to the uh, Public Works Department. We're on there as well as the other divisions. Uh, that's also where our holiday schedule will be posted as well. All right. Thank you, Cameron. All right, thank you. All right. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of City Beat. Kudos to all of those Public Works employees. I told you earlier, Public Works Week is so special because we have so many employees who make sure that you get the services that you need. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman. More of City Beat coming up next week.
transfer station stops over there, is weighed, um, and then it proceeds to one of our two facilities here uh, to unload their materials. And once they're unloaded, then we in turn use uh, specific equipment to load them up into trailers. Uh, in the case of recyclables, they go in closed top trailers. We take two trailer loads a week to Raleigh. In the case of solid waste, it's loaded into open top trailers um, mm -hmm. in preparation to go to Bertie County. And, and talk a little bit about uh, this area too, the CNG refueling station. Okay. Immediately behind me, there's a truck that's got a blue body on it. Uh, we purchased two rear loaders that are CNG powered through a Blue Skies grant, um, and we also put the station in. The advantage to CNG. Uh, one is the trucks are much quieter, they're much cleaner, and we're burning compressed natural gas. We're saving a lot of fuel mm. in those. So uh, they've been a very good addition, and I hope as opportunity comes, you know, we may be able to expand the fleet. But we're saving a fairly significant amount of diesel fuel every month. That's a good thing. And, and from what you're telling me, this uh, division seems pretty expansive. How many people do you have within the division and, and what are some of their functions? Well, we've got five people who are devoted to the collection of materials starting at the scale house going up to the transfer station. We've got that group of folks. Then we've got 47 other people involved in actual collection of material, um, answering phone calls, supervisors, maintenance. Um, We've also got a group of folks that work on our front loaders that are the large trucks that provide dumpster service uh, mm -hmm. to commercial and uh, some residential areas such as apartments, mobile home parks. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of folks have asked as well about the rollout recycling program. I know we went through a pilot program. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, we put out about 4,000 carts uh, throughout the city. Uh, and it's a 96 gallon container, very similar to the garbage carts many people have, except it has a blue lid. Mm -hmm. It's designed for recyclables only. We collect it every two weeks. The advantage of, of the cart for the rest of it is they've got five times the capacity of one of the red bins. Uh, it's easier to get to the street, even in cold weather or rainy weather. And for our collectors, it's actually easier to uh, service the containers because we use the hydraulic jacks on truck. But the capacity is the main uh, advantage uh, for us. Uh, we hope to expand that. Uh, unfortunately, it's just going to take a little bit of time to reach every residence in time. So how was it determined who was involved with the pilot program? Well, we had to pick specific geographic areas. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with four days of service, we tried to pick two areas per, um, per day of service. We'll collect one area one week, another area the following week. But we, you know, again, we tried to touch all parts of the city. We went to areas that were recycling well. We went to areas that were recycling poorly in the anticipation that would make it easier for people to recycle. And again, another advantage to recycling is it's actually more cost effective to uh, deal with disposal of recyclables than it is to put things in a landfill. And of course, a lot of things are banned from the landfill, such as aluminum cans, plastic bottles, and so on. Okay. What about, what about bulk items? Well, Where are those taken? The truck that just passed us is one of our grab-all trucks, and the bulk item to us is large furniture items, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that truck is a specialized piece of equipment where the operator sits up top, operates a hydraulic claw or knuckle mm -hmm. boom, picks it up, and then all of that comes back to the transfer station as well. Okay, so any other services that you might have missed? Well, there's a variety of things that we also do. We collect used oil uh, from residences. We pick up tires. Uh, we do have available for people that are doing cleanup of um, you know, large yard cleanups. I'm not talking about land clearing, but where they may have a lot of leaves or where they uh, pruning bushes, or they may be clearing out an attic or a storage house. Mm -hmm. We do have a debris trailer. It's the size of a, a Ford pickup truck, 16 cubic yards, that's available for a, a small fee, mm -hmm. uh, and that can be scheduled by calling our office. Uh, we also pick up recyclables from four drop-off locations throughout town. Um, that's a place where people that 
may have excess materials, want to get, get them out of the house, can go ahead and take them. But we, we do that as well. Okay, well, some interesting stuff, Cameron. Right. Thank okay. you so much. All Anything right. else you want to add? Well, one other thing I would ask, you know, one of the questions we, we run into periodically is what's the best way to deal with yard waste? Yard waste needs to be kept separate from garbage. It doesn't need to be included in those uh, rollout carts. Uh, we prefer a, a clear plastic bag if possible so it's readily identifiable because yard waste, again, we're taking to the compost yard at, at Air Road and we've got to pick those bags up and our personnel have to split it and open it because we can't run the, the plastic through. But again, by law, we have to keep yard waste out of the landfill, so we're making a conscientious effort to do that. We do allow residents to purchase a rollout cart and have it designated for yard waste only. So again, okay. clear separation of that. Uh, another thing is in preparing your trash to go into your rollout container. Always advisable to put it in a bag, tie the top of the bag. That way as the cart's dumped into the truck, you know, we don't have blowing trash up and down the, the street. Okay. And what's that number? You mentioned your office number earlier. Right. If you call 467-4800, choose option 7. Uh, another place for information is also the city's website. Go to the uh, Public Works Department. We're on there as well as the other divisions. Uh, that's also where our holiday schedule will be posted as well. All right. Thank you, Cameron. All right. Thank you. All right. And thank you for tuning in to another edition of City Beat. Kudos to all of those Public Works employees. I told you earlier, Public Works Week is so special because we have so many employees who make sure that you get the services that you need. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman. More of City Beat coming up next week.